Um, my talk today will be about hardening Zabbix, uh, more specifically about hardening it by uh, use, making use of SA Linux. Um, the reason I did this talk this year is because I have noticed that a lot of people make guides on the internet about how to install Zabbix, but the first step they do is like disable SA Linux. So um, my talk will go about um, hardening Zabbix a little bit, but more specifically about the SA Linux part, because I think it's quite important that uh, we don't disable SA Linux. It's like disabling your firewall. It's something you don't do in a production environment. So who am I? My name is Patrick Aterhoeven. I work for a company named Open Future, and we are mainly an open source integrator. So uh, we only work with open source products. Um, so my job there is, of course, an open source consultant. And this year, I uh, authored a book uh, together with Pactpub. Um, it's named the Zabbix Cookbook. So, like I said already, why this talk? Too many guides on the internet are saying, um, just ignore as a Linux, disable it, it's too difficult, um, just ignore it. Also, people ignore to check if uh, their distro uh, has updates. Um, we are Linux guys, we are sometimes too secure in our operating system. Uh, we think that only Windows people have uh, updates and that we don't really have to do it on our Linux boxes. So it's quite important to do the updates on your distribution also. And then of course there are lazy sysadmins. Normally it's a good thing because you try to automate things, but sometimes it's just a bad thing because you're too lazy to do your updates, too, too lazy to dig into as a Linux, how the things are working, how you need to configure it. So um, that's why I will give this talk. So what can we do to improve the security of our Linux boxes with um, Zabbix on it? Uh, first of all, properly configure Apache or Nginx or whatever you use to make use of HTTPS instead of HTTP. Then, of course, um, at least something is properly configured to do encryption. Um, do not connect it to the internet. Uh, I mean, the, if you Google for Zabbix, a lot of the websites are still um, yeah, Zabbix boxes that are open to the internet. Um, it's a bad idea. Just put it behind the VPN. Don't put it uh, open on the internet because then we are uh, to the second point. Um, guest users in the Zabbix sometimes are uh, still active, and if you put it on the internet, then everybody can see what your IP addresses are, what the names of your servers are. Uh, you put a lot of information wide open on the internet. So just put it behind the VPN and disable the guest user to make sure that it is not uh, open and, uh, for everybody to see. Then of course, to our point, uh, enable and configure as a Linux properly. Um, I see that a lot of people still struggle with it, that they have the wrong idea, that it's difficult, but I will show you that it's not so difficult at all. In fact, it's quite easy to do. Check for security updates on your OS. Uh, remember, we have some issues this year with Heartbleed, Ghost, and a few other bugs that happened, so do the updates uh, on a regular basis. So the wrong ideas about as a Linux. It's too difficult to configure. It's easier to disable it. We don't need it at all. It's too much effort to uh, configure it. And as a Linux, doesn't add any security at all. Uh, it's a wrong idea. Um, some people think that it has NSA backdoors uh, because it has been developed by the NSA. It's a stupid thing. I mean, NSA developed it because they want to have a more secure box. So it, they, would, they wouldn't put backdoors in their own software. The truth about as a Linux, is that as a Linux is developed to protect us, adding a backdoor will also put American companies at risk, so that's another reason why there is definitely not a backdoor in as a Linux. The kernel code is freely available, so feel free to have a look at it and let me know if you can find some backdoors. I'm sure you will not find anything in it, but if you are not sure, just check it anyway. As a Linux was difficult to use, it's true. In the beginning, it was very hard to set up and to configure, but um, it has been improved over the years a lot. Certainly, since Red Hat 6, as a Linux, is very easy to debug. Uh, so it's not really an excuse anymore to not to use it in a production environment. So how can we activate as a Linux? First of all, if you use uh, Red Hat, it should be activated already by the installation. But just in case you want to check, um, you can use the command get enforce to see if it is in a permissive mode and enforcing mode or disabled. So normally, it should return enforcing to be sure that it is activated. In case it's not, you can just edit the as a Linux configuration file. You can find it under etc as a Linux config. And there as a Linux should be in enforcing mode. Um, you could also do it from the command line, 
uh, by setting a set and force if it, you have disabled it uh, by accident or for some debugging. Um, after uh, you put the configuration file in a forcing mode, if it was disabled from the start, you have to reboot, of course. Then, of course, you want it the easy way, so I have prepared a few um, things that you can use in as a Linux to configure your Zabbix box uh, from the start. On the agent side, it's important to set uh, the Boolean uh, um, Zabbix scan network. Um, the one means that it uh, should be activated, this Boolean. As a Linux uses a set of predefined Booleans that you can use. And with a get sabol minus A, you will get a list of all of them. So on the server side, for example, we need to set the Boolean uh, HTTPD can network connect on and HTTPD can network connect DB. Else our Zabbix server uh, will show the red uh, line that it cannot connect to the database and that your server, Zabbix server is not running. But actually it is running, it's just uh, not possible for Zabbix to connect to the database and to the network because of SE Linux. So if you want to see a list of everything that you can configure by already preset booleans, just do the get sabol minus A and then you will see a list of all the things you can easily configure. The minus P option is uh, to preserve, of course. If you don't put the minus P after a reboot, everything will be back to the original state. So always put the minus P uh, when you configure it. Of course, it's not only the booleans that have to be set sometimes. Uh, for example, in Zabbix, um, there is fping that we use, and we all know that fping makes use of uh, root rights by the SUID being set. So fping will fail. So in our Zabbix, we will always see the value of zero when we make use of fping, even everything is corrected properly. But this is because of SA Linux. And there is no Boolean that we can set for it, so it's a bit harder. Um, most people, are going in panic mode and they just disable as a Linux. But the only thing that we have to do is install one package and it's the S, uh, set troubleshoot server package. It's easy to do, you just do rum, uh, yum install set as a troubleshoot server and it gets installed. And then you'd only have to run one line and that is the uh, SE alert minus A on the varlog audit audit.log file. It will process the file. That's why the minus A option is there. It's to analyze the file and it will uh, give you some feedback about all the problems that has a Linux has detected in your system. So you will get uh, some feedback about as a Linux, about all the errors that have been detected and how to solve it. So you probably tell me now, yeah, it will be difficult to do because you have to make your own module and everything. Uh, I don't want to do this, I just disable it. Wrong again, it's very, very, very easy. This is how it looks like. The, for example, for the fping. And the first line will tell us that as a Linux is preventing the user has been fping from create access on the raw IP socket. Then the second line will tell us that the plugin catch-all is 100% confident and it suggests us to do the following lines. The first lines are all texts. It just uh, tells you that if you believe that this is a normal behavior, that you should report it as a bug. So you can do it in this case, uh, if you like. Um, Else you can generate your local policy if you want to have it fixed now. And of course we will do that because we want to have our Zabbix configuration up and running. And as you can see, it's quite easy. We only have to run one stupid line that says grab fping in the varlog audit audit.log and send it to audit to allow and then use the my m uh, my poll. My poll in this case is your policy. And I highly suggest you to uh, replace the word my poll, for example, with local and then the name of the policy that you want to create. Then you have uh, later, if you check all the policies, uh, a clear name that says that it is a local policy that you have created by yourself, for example, for FP. And then, of course, we have to load our module and this we do with SA module minus E and then the name of your module and we are ready. Uh, this, uh, if we have done everything, like just the two lines, we can use the fping um, in our Zabbix bit as a Linux activated. So as you can see, it's quite easy. It's, it's not that difficult and there is no real reason to go and disable as a Linux because of uh, like two lines that are already in a log file. It, it will tell you everything that you have to do. So if you run into problems, there are a few solutions. First of all, we, like I told you, as a Linux, we keep it activated. Um, if you have some strange behaviors and you think mm, everything is okay, maybe it's as a Linux, 
just run, for example, set enforce zero temporary to see if uh, problems go away. If your problem goes away, you can go back to the uh, audit file and check the audit file to see if there are any issues that you can resolve uh, by creating your own module or you can go to the list uh, of already pre-created modules uh, for SA Linux. Also check Varlog messages. As a Linux writes a lot of information also in the Varlog messages. Make use of uh, SE alert. Um, also LS minus Z will get you uh, a list of all the context that has uh, as a Linux being put on the files. Uh, if you don't have any idea what contexts uh, are, um, a good example is, for example, um, if you go to your house, you have a sofa, and for example, you are the only person who is allowed to use that sofa, you will put your name on it. This is more or less how as a Linux works and put context on files. It will put a certain context that tells, for example, that uh, Apache can only uh, run, for example, uh, Apache and cannot connect to your network by making use of uh, those contexts. The RestoreCon is a handy tool. Um, it will restore the context of your files. For example, we don't want to use the packages of Zabbix. We want to compile it for, I don't know what reason. Um, you copy everything, for example, in, var, uh, in var www HTML, And then, of course, your files will have the wrong context because they are not labeled uh, to be used by Apache. So you just use the RestoreCon and uh, point to the HTML folder with the correct context. And then it will restore everything in uh, the HTML folder with the correct context uh, from SA Linux. So it's quite easy. You just run one comment and all the files will have the correct context uh, after you have run the uh, restore comment. Another uh, tool that we can use is a chcon uh, minus, uh, minus reference. Here we can point to a source and a destination. If you like to have the same context as another file, you just point to the, the file with the correct context and then you point to the file that you have created by yourself in VI, for example, and it will copy the context from one file to the other. So, for example, if you create a, a configuration file in your HTML directory, it will have no context at all and then you could copy, for example, from another file in your HTML directory the correct context to your uh, file that you have created with VI. So, once again, an easy solution to create the correct context on your files. Um, so now that you know a little bit more about as a Linux, I hope that you will not disable it anymore, but that you will try to uh, use it in a proper way. I also created a small script that you can use in Zabbix. It's an extension that you just have to copy, for example, in your cron tab. Don't worry, it will not send any mails. Um, it will just run and it will send with the Zabbix sender all the information to Zabbix, so you have an ID if as a Linux is activated on your systems. It will also do a check of the security updates. It will tell you how many security updates you are behind. It will tell you how many moderate, how many critical updates uh, you have uh, to patch on your system. So it's available in my GitHub account and it's also available in the Zabbix share. So this way you can secure your systems uh, hopefully more in the future. So that was it. Thank you for your time. I don't know if uh, anybody has any questions about this topic. Okay, thank you, Patrick, for this presentation. I, I promise I will try to keep it uh, alive on my systems. Uh, according to you, is it possible to package, uh, uh, let's say, a SA Linux for Zabbix localized by distribution? Um, actually, is, I, I, installed I, the I, had a, I had a great discussion with Volker. Um, apparently, everything in uh, Red Hat is um, yeah. patched for uh, Apple. So everything is tested by Apple. So it will probably run great uh, out of the box on all the Apple uh, installations. Uh, with the Zabbix packages, there might be an issue. Um, but if you create your own, uh, if you have your, your own setup, it should be possible to create some modules. And then, for example, with some configuration management tool or with a script, it should be easy to launch them on your configuration and then it should work out of the box without any hassle. Okay, okay. So, do you think, for example, Kodai could add uh, uh, SA Linux for Zabbix uh, in, the, in the distributed package uh, on uh, Zabbix uh, download? Um, I don't know. You have to ask oh, him. Okay. 
Uh, thank you. It was interesting. Uh, two questions. First, is there any performance penalty for using uh, SE Linux with the Zabbix? Um, I haven't done any measurements to see if it runs smoother or more quick. Mm -hmm. um, I have no idea. I don't want to say yes or no. Um, okay. And uh, what was the second question? I forgot. Okay. No, you can Offline. ask later. No problem. <laughs> Hi. Um, thank you. Uh, quite interesting. I'm one of the guys uh, who is uh, going to disable select uh, Linux, uh, security Linux. Yeah? Shame on you. Uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, I know I'm outing myself here. Um, yeah. Is this, um, is this, uh, uh, um, this um, uh, uh, the way that you present it like that you can take the log file yeah, and ask select Linux to create a policy? Mm -hmm. Uh, out of the message in the log file to uh, create a rule that would enable and allow uh, this uh, a certain activity. Is it something uh, that is going through all of the select Linux things? So is it, can I, can I, can I use it all the time? Because yeah, you can I'm use it all the time for any yeah. program. It's not specifically for Zabbix. It's as a Linux who is logging all the issues that it encounters in one file. So you just run the line mm. I told you with the SE alert and then it will process the whole file and it will tell you all the, the problems it has encountered and the solution. It will try to find the solution. It will tell you, like I have shown here, in an exact line what you have to do. Okay. And yeah, that makes a, uh, a real difference. It makes it much easier to use then. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Okay. So thank you again. Okay. You're welcome. Um, so, of course, thanks for uh, the nice presentation. I've been using actually your tutorial on how to um, install and configure uh, Zabbix server on CentOS 7 with Cell Linux enabled just three days ago. So, thank you. Okay. Um, one announcement. Uh, it seems uh, your script is not downloadable from shellzabbix.com. It doesn't have the download link for some reason. Okay, I will check it. Okay. And second question is about a guest user for the front end. Mm -hmm. um, what's the issue of well, if, it if, you, if you Google on, uh, yeah. then, and you look for Zabbix installations, you will yeah. find people who have their Zabbix installation open to the internet. And they have the guest users enabled. But by it's, default, the guest user doesn't have any access to any... Yeah, but people apparently still oh, some do of it. Them. They, they activate the guest user and they okay. open it to the internet. And I think it's bad practice because as guest user, you see too much information about the, the infrastructure of the company. Yeah, yeah, okay. of course, if you... Um, if you give some read permission to the guest user, okay, that should be more clear. Okay, thank you. Thanks for the presentation. One thing I just want to point out to everyone, um, there's a couple of really good uh, resources for SE Linux from Red Hat. One of the uh, good ones to start with, maybe would be worth uh, in a reference section, is the SE Linux coloring book. Uh, I don't know if you've seen that one. To anyone who's never used SE Linux, it's a really good, simple, straightforward introduction. Uh, that was written by a couple of Red Hatters. Also, there's another Red Hatter, Dan Walsh, who is essentially one of the industry experts on SE Linux, who works for Red Hat. Um, and he does a regular blog talking about SE Linux, how to configure it, some of the pitfalls to go through, and stuff like that. So there's some, some really wonderful resources on SE Linux. And uh, to get to your point about backdoors, Red Hat is one of the larger contributors to the kernel in SE Linux. Why the hell would we put a backdoor in software for our customers? Indeed. <laughs> Thank you for uh, the information. Okay. The, thank you for your questions, and I hope everybody now will start to use as a Linux.